Holland is a psychic medium who claims he has a special talent for revealing history. It's not like I'm reading a history book. I become part of the history. And John is now using his psychic abilities to try to solve some of the remaining mysteries of Waco. Who fired first, the federal agents or apocalyptic religious leader David Koresh and his Branch Davidian followers? The church people drew their blood first. They attack them, they come in, and then it's a free-for-all. Another lingering question. Was David Koresh holding the Branch Davidians against their will? They were being held. They were being held. And John figures out something never released to the public, how this California house was once linked to Waco. Wow, what an arsenal, John. Yes, weapons that have been put together in that workroom were used against agents from the ATF. No one knew. No one knew that. There's no way anyone could have known that. Today, John maintains a hectic schedule, writing books and lecturing to packed crowds all over the world, like this one in Sydney, Australia. Good morning, Sydney. How are you? But it's his location readings that continue to confound even the toughest skeptics. Before we took John to Waco, we tested his abilities by driving him blindfolded to another historic site. In this garage underneath the old Dallas police headquarters, Jack Ruby shot the accused assassin of President John F. Kennedy, Lee Harvey Oswald, on November 24, 1963. Jim Lavelle was the Dallas homicide detective who was handcuffed to Oswald when he was shot. Due to the fact that we'd had so many threats, if somebody did try to take him away from her, they'd have to take me too, and I certainly wasn't going to go willingly. As at Waco, John has no idea where he is or what happened here, but it doesn't take long before he begins to pick up on something. And for some reason, I feel swarms of people swarms of people coming in here. So I don't know if somebody comes out here and then down, but there's a massive amount of people coming here. I'm very emotional, Jim. Does this make sense? OK. I'm watching a movie, and I saw a shadow of a body, and then the flash. And, and it's funny. This is one of the times where it was all in black and white. Does somebody go down, Jim? Does somebody go down here? Yes. A single person? Yes. OK, because I'm seeing a body of a man here. Do you understand the man? Right. OK, don't tell me name, but there's something about a body and swarms of people. When he was shot, he just groaned and crumpled to the floor and uh, was uh, immediately unconscious. I didn't know where Jim fell into this. I thought he was a historian. I thought he just knew about this. But I heard in my head, I heard literally, he was right beside me. So that's when it clicked in. I said to Jim, are you personally involved with this? Were you here? Right. I just heard he was right beside me. Does that make sense? Right. OK. It's like a detective story, do you know what I mean? I just heard he was right beside me. So that brought me to the point where I said, I need to be right beside Jim. I wanted to put him on my right, not on my left. Would you have been on this person's right side? Right. OK. And I feel like I want to go down, OK? And I feel like you're right here. Like, I'm, I'm dragging on to you, Jim, for support. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. OK. I think that was probably one of the things that struck me most. It was amazing, to say the least. John then begins to describe what we assumed was Oswald's personality. I feel this guy's warmth, though, um, his generosity. I think if you needed something, no matter what it is, here you are. Jim Lavelle thinks John got it wrong. Oswald was not a giving person, and he was a very uh, kind of selfish individual. But John may have been right after all. And believe in their own faith. He may have been describing Jack Ruby, Oswald's assassin, who was known to be generous. Only minutes before the shooting, Ruby was at Western Union, wiring money to help one of his dancers pay her rent. Jim, this person wouldn't have been cuffed. Yes. They're cuffed. Because I just got cuffs coming out of here, so, or this way. So whoever this is, oh, OK. So they're cuffed. 
and I had my left arm handcuffed to his right. So this was what John was visualizing when he kept saying, I see handcuffs in, in front or back. Is this where they got, is this where they got Oswald? Right. Okay, so it's Lee Harvey Oswald. Okay, so that's my confusion. Okay, see, you know what's good, Jim? I don't know, I'm, I'm bad at history. I got an F. <laughs> I got an F, I got an F. And this, of course, happened when I was a child. To read this location, John says he used his finely tuned power of clairvoyance. That enabled him to see the events as they were unfolding. At the site of the Branch Davidian compound outside of Waco, Texas, medium John Holland is using his psychic abilities to reveal new details about David Koresh's Branch Davidians and the ATF raid that ultimately led to their fiery end. I'm thinking, here they are, a commune, a church, and, you know, but yet, it's like a little army. It's like mm -hmm. a little army. So they, uh, they knew how to protect themselves. I was interested that John was seizing on this was an army, a small army. And I believe that from a very, very early on period in his ministry that he intended that he would use weapons to control people. And he was, he was totally enamored with them. He claimed to be prophetic. He claimed to be prophetic, like doing what I do. <laughs> like this is, I know what's gonna happen. He was expecting this and, and, play, and uh, he kind of knew in a way what was gonna happen. Well, the religion was very much steeped in ap apocalyptic philosophy in the book of Revelation and um, that the world was coming to an end and part of David Koresh's uh, apocalyptic philosophy was that someday they will come to get us. So they were prepared for an attack. For years, it was known that David Koresh also lived in another house, a house outside of Los Angeles. And a lot of the time when he wasn't in Texas, he was in California. But what hasn't been publicly known up until now is that this house played a key role in the violent endgame of Waco. All John knows is that this house, which is now occupied by new owners, was once connected to Waco, but he doesn't know how. And we're turning left. Accompanying John is retired local police lieutenant John Hackworth. You're approaching two steps. Hackworth up. investigated Koresh's activities here in the early 1990s. I'm not sure what I'm doing here yet, okay? But whoever lives here, or the family now that lives here, there's, a, there's a, a lot of love in this family. This house is filled with love and memories, but as I'm here, there's an undertone. I'm curious, um, are you a cop? Yes. Okay. Retired. Okay, this has to do with cops. There's a cop feel, there's a search feel, there's a hiding or a searching, and a searching, and I can't tell you the energy that I have right now. I am so amped. And this is the same feeling I got when I had David Koresh at the place. I'm so amped, I'm wired. When I was at the compound, I was sucked dry. Here, I was infused. I had so much energy. Do you know of a hidden space, John, in here? Yes. Okay, you see, this is how I work as a, as a psychic and a medium. I got the house, and then there's always a separate feel a separate feel, and I've always had this thing about secret compartments, especially as a kid. So I feel like it's a separate space. And is there a basement to this house? Yes. Yeah, I am not in light, I am not in light, and I am so amped. Let's go, <laughs> let's go. Take me down, two different places, take me down. John, take me down. On a side note too, John, watch your back. You know that back thing you got going on there? Jesus. Um, <laughs> Does it make sense? Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> just, just watch that. There's a disc problem. Get it operated on. Have it looked at. Microsurgery, something. Okay? I'm almost here. I don't know what I'm looking at, but um, I'm going to, before I open the door, um, are you the lead man with this? Yes. Yeah. In the basement, John reports that he immediately sees weapons. Um, John, would you understand, if I talk about weapons, can I talk about weapons? Yes. Um, I can't emphasize enough to you. I'm not talking about a revolver. I feel like I'm stockpiled for, well, this will last us for a while, okay? The bullets, the guns, the bombs, the, the grenades, the here. But does, does this discovery 
of you in this house here, does this happen before the, the deaths in uh, Waco? Before the final deaths, yes. Yes, that's what I mean. So this equals that. There's like a major vein going on here. He pointed through one of the windows in the basement and said, something leads from here over to there. He was right. Does behind this wall, John, mean something to you? Into the backyard, yes. When I went outside, it was almost a continued failing, a pull. It was a sense of pull, and I went right to that shed. Am I allowed to go in here? Yeah? Yes. This is where they made things. Um, besides this being a work cabinet for the, for the, for the people that live here, um, I'm constructing things. Um, I'm making things. Yes. I, sm I smell gunpowder yes. or something. I smell gunpowder. Wow, what an arsenal, John. Yes. Every form of weapon you can imagine was in that space, and I was there. This was the perfect setup for them. The uh, California again, police uh, agreed. We concluded that the weapons that had been put together in that workroom had been transported to Waco, Texas, and were used against agents from the ATF. John's revelation stuns Hackworth. I got goosebumps. We didn't release any of the information to anyone about explosives being made. No one knew. No one knew that. There's no way anyone could have known that. And inside the shed, John picks up on something else extraordinary. I started hearing names. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, Summersworth, Summerville, Summer, the name Summers, Summers, something. Does that make sense? Yes. I have no clue what that is. His name was Greg Summers. He was reported to be extremely violent and extremely loyal to David Koresh. We thought he might be in Waco, but we were afraid he might be there at the house or nearby. And we thought, if he's out here, uh, we're gonna have a problem. The police were never able to confirm that Greg Summers was at the house, but they did learn later on that he died in the fire at Waco. Back inside the house, John begins to perceive more. I'm like either anywhere from 20 to 40 people or something. It's like, oh, excuse me, get out of my way. It's almost like I'm bumping into people here. John soon learns why. This is the home that David Koresh, known as Vernon Howell to us, shared with 18 women who were members of his group and uh, some of their children. 